Expert from Paradise is a film with a lot of plot. So much plot. My name is Christine, this is Hamstarko, and let's find out whether there isn't a little bit more to it than that. in a dystopian society. Due to Earth's environment being mostly destroyed, 98% of humanity have transferred their consciousnesses into a virtual reality called Diva. That's where we meet our protagonist, an agent called Angela. She's tasked to find a hacker who is threatening this peaceful environment. As she's unable to capture him online, Diva's government sends her back into the real world, where she's supposed to find the culprit with the help of a laid-back guy called Dingo. And if you're laughing now, you're regularly watching Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Yes, you do. Dingo has grown up in the old world and is supposed to help her get around and acquire the information she needs. There were only two things that bugged me about Expert from Paradise and they aren't even exactly bad. More like a matter of taste, which is why I will address them up front to have them out of the way. At the beginning I'd hoped that only the parts that take place in this virtual reality would have been animated in CG and the rest of it would be hand drawn. That would have been a great way to emphasize the difference between the two worlds. But I was wrong. The entire movie is CG animated and we all know when it comes to Tori, quality is always a little bit of a gamble. Let me put it this way, we have seen CG from Tori Animation, that looked a lot worse. Expect from Paradise the CG is solid and especially fun during the mega action sequences. Since the entire world was created in 3D, it has also a very consistent look which I prefer to a combination of 3D and 2D that doesn't quite come together. And there are a lot of things we have down in CGI animation. Quick movements, shiny shiny surfaces, water, special effects. CGI gets problematic when it comes to tiny things like facial expressions, the way a hair and fabric moves or a sudden stop. Fabric for example tends to have really hard edges and Angela's hair reminded me of overcooked spaghetti more than once. It doesn't feel right to us being spoiled by Kyoto Animation's fluffy hairstyles. And that is kind of the point. It took a lot of talented people, time, technological progress and money to get where we are nowadays. And I'm pretty sure that we will reach this level of understanding in computer animation sooner or later as well. There already are people and companies who are better at this. But this is where the Toei effect kicks in. How much time and further down the road money are you willing or allowed to spend on a project? If you have been a little bit of a snob towards CGI in anime, I would consider Expert from Paradise as a way to get, well, at least on neutral terms with it. My second problem is the way the first 20 minutes are shot. Look, I don't have a problem with fanservice, I appreciate the perfection of 2D bodies. I simply prefer a more subtle or comedic approach. But this movie went for the cheapest situations, camera angles and jiggles. And yes, I used the word jiggle on purpose because guess who the director is? Not him, his real life model Seiji Mizushima. I was rolling my eyes hard over the first scenes and I was dreading how this was planning to continue over the 103 minute long runtime. But then it changed gears. The first dialogue between Angela and Dingo poked fun at everything that had bugged me so far. Of course the first half of this film doesn't only consist of fanservice, it also establishes the rules. After that, Geno Hobuchi, who was responsible for the script, started doing his thing to slowly but surely take everything apart and turn it head over heels. From the first dialogue between Angela and Dingo, it had me. I saw what he was doing, I liked it and I wanted more. At the same time, none of the characters say more than necessary. Expect from Paradise doesn't waste time on telling you the backstory in a, as we all know, kind of fashion. Don't you love it when they do that? <sighs> you just kind of get the hang of everything from short dialogues between Dingo and a couple of merchants and the pure look of whatever's left of Earth. Everything else is left to your own imagination and that is more than fine with me. Despite being very economic in terms of backstory and dialogue, our two main characters are very well balanced. Dingo being voiced by Shinichiro Miki, representing the old world, and Angela, voiced by Rie Kubimiya, representing the brave new world. Seeing the two of them questioning each other's views brought up some very interesting thoughts, but both of them were outshone by a tiny robot they met on Earth. He reminded me of a more talkative version of Wally, and he's just the sweetest thing. 
In general, it's also very easy to tell the two worlds apart by their soundtrack. Everything that has to do with Diva has a very futuristic electronic sound along the lines of Blade Runner or Terminator. The real world in which Dingolus uses real instruments, mostly acoustic guitars, and when those worlds collide, they create the most curious themes that even rely on unusual instruments like a didgeridoo, for example. Responsible for the soundtrack is Narazaki, who also composed Hosuki no Reitetsu's opening. He does really interesting stuff. With the course the story takes towards the end, it feels like a lot of it could have been used in Psycho Pass 2 as well. I still don't think Psycho Pass 2 was bad, it was just half as elegant as it could have been had Orobuchi still been around. Therefore I recommend watching Spell for Paradise without a doubt, unless you really really don't like watching purely CGI animated movies. The mecha design is nice and a bit unusual, the fighting sequences are fluent and fun, once you are used to it it looks good, our characters are amazingly entertaining and for a Urobuchi story it has a surprisingly positive outlook on things. I do remember the last time he tried to create something nice and simple. If you're interested, Expert from Paradise is available for legal streaming on Netflix, in both sub and dub. Personally, I would recommend checking out the subtitled version, because Angela's English voice is annoyingly high-pitched, and Dingo's rough and deep voice doesn't quite fit his character either. I'm not yet sure whether I'll be able to upload next week, because I'm going home to visit the folks for my mom's birthday. I also haven't decided whether I want to upload a review or an editorial next the whole reviewers reviewing reviewers uh, didn't let me go and I wrote down some thoughts but it's not yet a coherent text. I also feel like everything I could say about this topic is common sense but apparently it is not because otherwise we wouldn't have this discussion right now. <sighs> if you're interested in whatever is to come then don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.